Uh, I'm here with uh, Professor Jean-Pierre Cabestan and Jennifer Joy in a Q&A discussion about Taiwan and Somaliland. So I'd like to first introduce our two guests for today. Uh, our first guest is Professor Jean-Pierre Cabestan, who is a senior fellow at the French National Center for Scientific Research and research professor of political science at Hong Kong Baptist University. He recently published an article in The Diplomat titled The Somaliland Connection, Taiwan's Return to Africa on September 22nd, uh, I'm sorry, September 2nd, 2021. Uh, this article uh, kind of prompted the reason for this Q&A. Uh, we'll discuss the article a little bit further, um, but we're gonna leave a link to that description a link to that article in the description below. So go ahead and uh, click on that and read that when you have a minute. Uh, the other guest for today is actually someone who is uh, uh, an integral part of our Taiwan Studies program. Uh, this is Jennifer Joy. She's an MA graduate of the Jackson School of International Studies here at the University of Washington and a specialist on East Africa and Taiwan. She wrote her MA thesis titled Somaliland and Taiwan Unrecognized Sovereignty and Patron-Client State Relations uh, just finished this year. Uh, and as I mentioned, she is the program coordinator for our Taiwan Studies program. Uh, so we're very happy to have uh, both Professor Kapistan and Jennifer able to join us for this Q&A today. Uh, so I'll get right into it. I want to ask um, the first question to both Jean-Pierre and Jennifer. And uh, we're going to do a bit of a, a mixed Q&A format where I'll be asking some of the questions, Jennifer will ask some questions, but uh, Jennifer will also be answering some of these questions. Uh, so this first question is from me to both Jean-Pierre and to Jen. Uh, what is Somaliland and why is it in recent headlines with Taiwan? What's important about it and why does it matter for Taiwan? All right, should I start? Uh, well, thank you for the role, uh, James and Jennifer for inviting me uh, to this uh, show. I'm, uh, I'm very excited to talk about uh, a, a country, Somaliland, which I visited uh, rather briefly, actually, in August 2021 um, for my work on China-Africa relations and also uh, the Taiwan dimension in, 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 uh, in, the ta in this uh, relationship. Now, what is Somaliland? It's a de facto state. Um, which has been independent for exactly 30 years, uh, since 1991. Um, first of all, it was um, a British colony until 1960. It was independent for five days in uh, late Ju July 1960, but decided to uh, merge with uh, uh, Somalia, which was originally an Italian colony, um, which capital city is Mogadishu. And uh, since uh, August 20, 1960, all the way to 91, they were forming just one country. Uh, because of, this, of the um, civil war, the uh, Siad Barre, the Somalia president's the repression of Somaliland, Somaliland decided uh, to become independent in 1991. Now, Somaliland has not been recognized as a nation state by the international community because uh, of various reasons, the main one, being the uh, um, opposition of the U African Union to uh, any partition uh, of any nation in Africa. Uh, African countries have inherited the boundaries of the colonial times, and it's always been a principle of the African Union to keep those boundaries as much as possible. Of course, you have other examples of partition, like uh, one of the recent ones is South Sudan, as you know, uh, for 10 years now. Uh, but Somaliland, uh, has been a successful de facto state for, for 30 years and uh, has tried to de-isolate itself in uh, connecting with various nations around the world, um, including a year ago, Taiwan. And that's how things we started with Taiwan, uh, which uh, has something in common with Somaliland to be, is to be ill recognized by the international community. And uh, two uh, de facto states uh, uh, here have decided to work together and to cooperate. Anything to add, Jennifer? Sure. I think Jean-Pierre covered it really well. Um, I would add that, you know, Somaliland, for those of our listeners that don't know, it is in the most northern section of what is internationally recognized as Somalia. And for its relevance to how it ties with Taiwan, 
in one way you could view Somaliland as a peer in that it is like Taiwan stuck in this conundrum of being internationally non-recognized as a sovereign state. Although like Taiwan, it has its own currency, its own flag, national anthem, telecommunications, infrastructure, anything that you might routinely think of as a state. Um, and not only is Somaliland could be considered as a peer of, to Taiwan stuck in this sort of nebulous zone, but most recently it is Taiwan's most recent um, sort of diplomatic ally um, in the African continent, where other than Somaliland, Taiwan really only has ties to the small country of Eswatini. I would add something about the location of Somaliland, as Jennifer mentioned it briefly. Uh, it's located in the Horn of Africa. It's a very uh, important uh, part of Africa, close to the Bab el Mandaid Strait, close to the Djibouti uh, bases, uh, including China base there now. And uh, it has uh, also a very important port, which is Berbera, uh, which is um, um, a, a direct competitor of Djibouti. And for, for the uh, neighboring countries, in particular Ethiopia, Somaliland is a uh, an important connection to the Gulf of Aden, to shipping, uh, exports and imports. So I think it's an important location for, for the whole of Africa and for East Africa in general. Yeah, thank you, Jean-Pierre and Jennifer. Um, Jennifer, I think you will ask the next question. Is that right? I do, that's right. Jean-Pierre, you visited Somaliland for about one week in August. Can you please tell us why you went? what it was like, and what were the notable things you observed while being there? Well, what triggered my interest, of course, was Taiwan. I'm, uh, I've been a you know, student of Taiwan for many years. I've uh, looked at uh, what Taiwan has been doing in Africa, in various parts of Africa. I went to uh, a few years ago when, when Taiwan still had diplomatic relations with Gambia, I went to Gambia. Later, I went to uh, Burkina Faso, and I wrote an article on Burkina Faso, Taiwan relations before uh, they cut diplomatic relations because of Chinese pressure in 2017. So uh, I've looked at uh, the way uh, Taiwan has been uh, uh, developing cooperation uh, programs and also public diplomacy in Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I've, you know, myself been interested in what, uh, uh, you know, the connection between China and Africa and uh, also Taiwan to China competition in Africa. Now, as uh, Jennifer mentioned, now it's coming to sort of a a close in the sense that only East Sardini still has relations with Taiwan, but with the Somaliland, actually, uh, that's why the, uh, hence the title of my, 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 my article is the kind of a return of Taiwan to, to, to Africa and the, in uh, and, uh, establishing the Taiwan representation office in Somaliland, Taiwan uh, Taiwan true in Chinese. Uh, I think it's a way for Taiwan to uh, come back and also develop relations with all the neighboring countries of Somaliland, including Ethiopia, including Kenya, um, including uh, other countries like South Sudan and, and, and Uganda as well. So I think it's uh, that's what triggered my interest uh, to, to be short. If I could ask a quick follow-up question to that, Jean-Pierre, do you see Somaliland as being more unique compared to Iswatini or Gambia or Burkina Faso? Um, I mean, historically, Taiwan's relations with the Horn of Africa have been weaker than West Africa, where where uh, uh, Gambia and Burkina Faso are. Well, there are a number of reasons for, for, for Somaliland to be in need for relations. The one is that it's not well recognized as a nation state, in spite of the fact that it, all, it meets all the requirements of the nation state according to the Montevideo Convention, as we know. And, uh, and, and vice versa, Taiwan uh, uh, was looking for potential diplomatic allies and partners in Africa. Taiwan is trying also to set up representation offices around the world. Uh, there was an attempt to set up such representation in Guyana, which failed a year ago. Um, much more recently, uh, uh, Taiwan has been more successful with Lithuania in uh, Eastern Europe, uh, and uh, where well, Taiwanese representation office was set up not too long ago. And uh, so that's why uh, I think it's interesting to see how Taiwan is also trying to reach out to other countries with in establishing meaningful political relations. Now, the, the, the 
it's short of diplomatic relations. Actually, what Taiwan has said in Somaliland is a, a highly political or highly official relationship. Or Guan Yuan Hua the Guan Xi. So, um, and, and it's, uh, I think, very important because it's a way of uh, going around the, you know, the one China policy, which many countries have uh, adopted uh, because of China pressure, and um, and to uh, exist and to cooperate with other countries. So, for, for Somaliland, I think Taiwan is an important partner, uh, which uh, uh, allows uh, to have uh, more international, a better international status. It doesn't mean that Somaliland is uh, isolated, actually. Somaliland has meaningful relations and de facto relations with uh, all its neighboring countries, including Ethiopia, Kenya, Djibouti, um, and, and uh, the uh, Arab Emirates, uh, United Emirates, uh, which is an important partner of Somaliland as well. Now, Turkey is, has a, a big consulate there, um, and um, uh, the British and the Danes have uh, also uh, representative offices, um, so that so so it's not isolated, and it's cooperating with the uh, UN agencies, uh, which have uh, offices uh, also on the ground, including the WHO and uh, World Health Organization. So, um, so it exists, and I would add to that that uh, if, even uh, at the commercial level, Somaliland has had for many years. Uh, links with mainland China, importing goods and exporting goods to mainland China. Uh, some Chinese delegation went to Somaliland 10 years ago. Uh, some Somaliland uh, commercial delegations also visited China some time ago. Uh, but uh, China, of course, was uh, has official links with Mogadishu and the Republic of so uh, Somalia. And uh, well, uh, we may come back to that, but uh, was not willing to uh, um, have any uh, official relation with Somaliland for that reason. Yeah, thank you, Jean-Pierre. So this is a good segue to my next question, which is for Jen. Uh, so Jen, in addition to be trained in Taiwan studies, you're also an East Africa expert. Could you tell us why Somaliland is unique in the African context, which uh, Jean-Pierre has, has touched on already, but um, if you could tell us a little bit more about that. And also, what might this relationship with Taiwan mean to Somaliland? Is it something special for them? Sure. Thank you, James. Well, I think for Somaliland's unique position in the region, there are a few ways that you can view it. One is that there are other secessionist movements in the Horn, which have been more successful than Somaliland, but less successful than Somaliland in a different way. So we have South Sudan and Sudan, or we have Eritrea and Ethiopia, South Sudan and Eritrea both received independence, but they have not fared well post-independence versus Somaliland is in a different position, but they have operated quite successfully, right? So that is a unique situation that's going on. Another unique situation with Somaliland is that um, internationally speaking, Somaliland will be seen as tied to Somalia. However, it has been operating at a much more sort of peaceful manner than Somalia has able has been able to do for the past number of years. Um, while I was doing my research for my thesis, I read this book by Sarah Phillips titled When There Was No Aid. And she offered a specific statistic that was really impressive, um, which is that since 1996, a few years post Somaliland unilaterally declaring independence, since 1996, Somaliland has suffered 1% of fatalities from violent conflict than the rest of Somalia. So clearly Somaliland is doing something different while Somalia has had dozens of internationally supported and funded peace conferences. So there's the question of how are they doing this and what are they doing? And I think lastly, um, Jean-Pierre has already touched on this, but Somaliland is unique and very important due to its sort of geopolitical position. Um, they have the port of Berbera, which is a very major economic hub, which Ethiopia needs to access water since it became a landlocked country with the loss of Eritrea. It's very close to the Arabian Peninsula. You can hit a baseball to Yemen. Um, so it gets sucked into the orbit of the Middle East and its own geopolitics and what its major powers are doing. But also it lies at the mouth of the Red Sea and the Suez Canal. So it's on this very major economic corridor as well. 
So just positionally, Somaliland is sort of primed to be an important and unique contributor to the region. Um, and as for what um, this development Taiwan brings to Somaliland, as John Pierre has said, Somaliland has long been known to regional players. It has very frequent and regular contact with all of the countries in the region. But this is really an extension to being on the international stage, whereas they are reaching to a very distant country, Taiwan. And if nothing else, at least they're getting people talking about Somaliland. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, so my next question is uh, about the People's Republic of China. How does the PRC play into this? Does Somaliland fear PRC retaliation for its actions? And Jean-Pierre already mentioned uh, the delegation uh, 10 years ago. So maybe we could start with Jean-Pierre and then and Jennifer can join in. Of course, China has been uh, pretty unhappy to see uh, Somaliland establishing uh, these high level relationship with Taiwan. Uh, a year ago in uh, July uh, 2020, and uh, has tried to disrupt the relationship in, make, in making uh, a lot of, uh, uh, well, exerting a lot of pressure on Somaliland, but also uh, trying to visit the, the, uh, the country and, and send delegation there and making proposals to Somali, the Somaliland government uh, in order to put an end to this relationship. The major proposal made by the, the uh, Chinese uh, delegates uh, was uh, to establish a liaison office. And that, uh, that's what's quite interesting in terms of proposal. Now, for people who re still remember the early 70s, that exactly the kind of representation the US and China agreed upon after Nixon's trip to China is to establish liaison office in Beijing and Washington uh, until uh, full normalization can take, take place. So uh, that, that's an interesting proposal. Uh, and, and there was a fear that actually the Somaliland authority will, will give in, you know, uh, uh, because the Chinese have deep pockets and they would have made a, uh, also, um, I, I guess, uh, uh, attractive uh, financial proposals. Now, up to now, I have to say, uh, those attempts have not been uh, successful. Uh, I think uh, Taiwan has uh, managed to cultivate a very fruitful and friendly relationship with the Somaliland authorities. They're well established in Argeza, the capital city of Somaliland. Uh, they have projects around, uh, you know, agricultural like projects, health projects, and so on. We can come back to that later. And uh, I have to say the relationship is pretty in, in pretty good shape. So uh, that doesn't mean that China is not present on the ground. And uh, as I mentioned in my article, when I traveled to Berbera to uh, visit the, the DP port, which is a port uh, modernized by DP World, which is a big company based in the Emirates, uh, based in Dubai, actually. Uh, and I had an interview with the, uh, the CEO of uh, DP port, uh, uh, Berbera, uh, Thai national, very nice guy. And, um, and I, I was staying in an hotel where I bumped into a, I think a dozen Chinese engineers and technicians, so I, young young chaps actually. So I talked to them, and they told me, "Well, yes, we we work for for Zhenhua, these big, uh, you know, container crane companies, uh, which control a large chunk of the world market of container cranes, and they're there to help, you know, uh, maintaining the cranes uh, because the uh, and and maybe they will be involved in the next another additional extension of the." Of the harbor, if this extension takes place, so so and, and uh, so the Chinese, uh, in a way, are there, but very few actually. The, the, the Chinese presence in Somaliland is, is pretty pretty light, I would say. There was a Chinese restaurant in uh, Hargeza which had to close down uh, because of uh, lack of uh, lack of clients, I guess, a year ago. So, um, uh, but but the Chinese are based in Mogadishu, and, and they are keeping a close eye on Somaliland and, and of course, I'm happy with that relationship. So uh, the, the big question is, you know, how long can Taiwan uh, keep that relationship uh, uh, on track and uh, whether uh, down the road there will be a stronger pressure exerted by China, which would put an end to it. So uh, for the time being, uh, my, my, my answer would be uh, uh, negative. Uh, I don't think that China has been successful, but uh, um, we'll see in the future whether that can be kept uh, as it is today. Thank you, Jean-Pierre. Jennifer, do you have anything to add? Not much. I mean, I think Jean-Pierre covered it pretty well. I think any any person, much less 
state that watches the news understands that any anybody that interacts with Taiwan in a friendly manner will have the CCP in close pursuit afterwards. Um, you know, China can be very persuasive, whether that be through military intimidation or through sort of financial appeal. Um, and Czech diplomacy has certainly been a part of this history in the continent of Africa in the past, with various African countries switching recognition between Taipei or Beijing and receiving tens of millions of dollars each time. Um, so I do think it is a question of how Taiwan manages this relationship and what decisions Somaliland will make in the future. Yeah, I'm aware of, um, you know, I think Burkina Faso was a good example of a, a nation that had switched back and forth from Taiwan and the PRC and using each switch as a means to increase leverage in its financial relationships. Do we see Somaliland possibly pursuing this route? And if not, why not? I'm just curious what the um, what the maybe the non-financial considerations are for Somaliland. Um, well, there are a number of factors which uh, have um, made so far the Somaliland Taiwan connection pretty uh, strong and, and stable. I would I, I would say first of all, I think there's a good team of professional Taiwanese diplomats uh, based in uh, Gaza, uh, headed by uh, former ambassador Joe. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, his name is Lo 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 um, and and the whole team is uh, including some uh, Arabic speakers. Uh, is pretty professional. The second thing is they have a good connection with the government, uh, with the uh, de facto uh, the acting prime, uh, prime minister uh, Liban uh, Yusuf Osman, who is a very dynamic uh, uh, um, young official. And uh, they, they've been good at cultivating those links. The third factor is the fact that both countries are democracies. And that has uh, been uh, very much promoted by Taiwan and also by the Somaliland side. Of course, we can uh, uh, make uh, some reservations about the, you know, how democratic Somaliland is. It is democratic in the sense that you have multi-party elections. Um, everybody, including women, can vote. Of course, we can uh, deplore the lack of women's representation among the, the MPs. Uh, there's just one minister who is a, a woman. Uh, but, but for the region, I think it's pretty good. And it's pretty transparent. There's been a change of government, a change of majority. And, uh, and it's, it's a big contrast in, with, with the rest of the region, particularly with the Somalia, which has been uh, torn apart. And, by civil war, by the al Shabaab terrorist groups, and so on. Uh, so, uh, uh, and Somaliland is, is uh, mainly uh, is what, uh, really peaceful uh, for most of its uh, uh, and, and stable and safe on most of its uh, on most of its territory. So uh, now they'd also uh, uh, shared interest um, in. Uh, uh, developing these countries' relation with Ethiopia, uh, what has been called the Berbera Corridor, uh, which is and it's not only the port but also the road to the Ethiopian border, and uh, that's something which uh, has been developed by DP World as well, the Dubai company I mentioned earlier, and um, and, and I think both Somaliland and Taiwan have a, uh, an interest in. Uh, in uh, working together on, uh, on many economic projects uh, which have to do with the development of their I think Taiwanese have organized an expo not long ago, in, uh, or will, I'm sorry, we'll organize in November an expo, an expo in Berbera uh, in order to attract more Taiwanese investments. Now, of course, the final thing is the development projects uh, um, put together by the uh, Taiwanese government in uh, agriculture. Uh, and in, in health and, uh, and and training, and those projects are, have been pretty successful. Even if by its, their size they are not, you know, huge. But Somaliland is not a huge country. You know, and its population is uh, just under six million. Even the the country is vast. I mean, in terms of size, and um, it's, uh, it's 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 not a very populated country. So so in a way, uh, small is beautiful. And, uh, you know, small countries can cooperate and, and do meaningful things together. Okay, thank you, Jean-Pierre. This, um, this is a good segue to my, my last and final question, uh, which I'd like to ask you, Jean-Pierre. 
so now with Somaliland, as you've already remarked, with Somaliland and now Lithuania using the term Taiwan in its official term, the Taiwan Representative Office, instead of the older Republic of China, do you see this shift expanding to other countries in the future? Or is Somaliland and now Lithuania are the unique cases? Um, and what might this mean for Taiwan's future diplomacy efforts with the rest of the world? Um, we just after double ten, uh, if you notice uh, President Taiwan speaking uh, at uh, the uh, double ten celebration, the National Day, she mentioned, of course, that it was a hundred and tenth anniversary of the Republic of China. But she also mentioned that uh, the ROC, the Republic of China, on Taiwan has been on Taiwan for seventy two years. So now the uh, uh, Taiwanese government's uh, ambition or, or, or new narrative is to uh, emphasize these, these 72 years of uh, Taiwanized, of a Taiwanized, if I may say, ROC. So the uh, Republic of China on Taiwan. And that's the, the new identity of, uh, of uh, the uh, ROC, it's, it's, uh, um, which is to, to be, you know, to be a distinct uh, a jurisdiction uh, located on Taiwan. So hence the promotion of Taiwan around the world as uh, the name of the country more than the ROC, and you've seen that when the, when the passports were, uh, were changed not too long ago. And now the question is whether other countries can, uh, you know, accept that kind of uh, um, uh, name. And uh, there's been a lot of discussions in Europe, but also in Northern America about, you know, changing the, the, the name of the Taiwanese offices around the world. And, uh, the tech row should be should it be you know should it be renamed the uh, Taiwan representative office because the, the tech row is Taipei representative uh, you know, from an economic and cultural office um, and uh, there may be other countries in Europe who uh, will be tempted to to change the, the name of the Taiwanese representation but I don't know how many and I think the important signal will probably come from the European Union itself from the European Commission. If the European Union decides to, uh, re you know, change and accept uh, a new name for Taiwan's representation, that may trigger, a, you know, kind of domino effect in the in the, in the European Union and uh, 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 convince other countries to do the same. Do you see Somaliland and Lithuania as potentially providing this um, entry point? You know, is it is it the first domino to fall, and then? After that, then the, the European Commission, or or is it still kind of a uh, an uphill battle for Taiwan? I think it's an uphill battle. If I, I mean, to be frank with you, because of the fierce reactions of China after Lithuania, you know, decided to change the, the name of the Taiwanese office and to I mean to open an office actually uh, in the, in Taipei and to let the Taiwanese have an office. In, in, uh, in uh, Vilnius, uh, the capital city of Lithuania. So, uh, and, and the cost may be too high. I mean, because China has been now very um, much inclined to take sanctions, to, to you know, to, to 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 force the other country to pay a price for what, what they're doing, uh, which is uh, detrimental to China's interest in the view of Beijing. So. Uh, so I, we, we shall see. I mean, uh, and that's why I'm inclined to think that it's uh, up to the U European Union, which is a, in a much stronger position in, barg in bargaining position with Beijing, uh, to make the first step in order to convince other countries to do the same. Maybe some small country like the Czech Republic, uh, or even bigger country like Poland, uh, which uh, are less uh, dependent upon China in terms of trade and investments. Uh, maybe tempted to do the same, uh, but we shall see. I mean, uh, those um, are still, uh, I would say, exceptions to the rule, which is to keep the current name of Taipei uh, representative office. Okay, thank you, Jean Pierre. Uh, Jennifer, any any last items to add? No, I don't think so. Jean Pierre has covered that very nicely. Okay, well, uh, I'd like to thank uh, you both, uh, Professor Jean-Pierre Capistan and Jennifer Joy, uh, for your time today talking about Somaliland and Taiwan.